Real Scene TV is brought to you by Top Shelf Productions. Local musicians? Yeah, we've got that. The hottest restaurants and bars? We got that too. The stories that really matter, you'll find them here. Here's what's coming up tonight on Real Scene TV. You're telling them who I am as a person other than just a basketball player. Mortis comedy joint. Pole dancing has a wide array of fitness aspects. That was the grand finale of Midwest Fashion Week. Can you humor me and sing like the first verse? Uh, she's cold and she's cruel, but she knows what she's doing. That's the breakdown. Uh, Cause she's bittersweet, she knocks me off of my feet And I can't help myself, I don't want anyone else She's a mystery, she's too much for me But I keep coming back for more All that plus tickets to see Willie Nelson at IU From our downtown Indianapolis studios at the 247 Sky Bar Real Scene TV starts now. Are you on the scene? We are. We are tracking down celebrities and taking you inside their seat. Whether on film, TV, or behind the curtain, we've got the scoop. Breaking it down with the hottest recording artists and up-and-coming local acts you want to see. Showing you fierce fashion from chic designers to trendsetters. Taking you inside some of the country's best eats with first-class cooking. Sharing the spirit of giving, creating community, and celebrating culture. You'll find it all and more right here. Real Scene TV starts now. He's a hometown favorite, an Indiana Pacer, and now the co-host of his own radio show. We're hanging out with George Hill and the rest of the team of WNDE. He's waiting at five, at four. Now he goes. Hill all the way, puts it up, and in game over, Pacers win. You have a really good show. I mean, it's fun. You know, it's something that you know brings out who I am as a person, not just as a basketball player, and that's what people really want to see. Everyone knows me as George Hill, the Indiana Pacer. Um, they know that I play basketball and that's my life, but uh, who this is, you know, basically telling them who I am as a person other than just a basketball player, the things I like to do, uh, the places I like to go, um, things like that. So it's always fortunate enough to, to get an opportunity like this and just take advantage of it. George has a unique story being from Indianapolis, coming up through IPS and really doing so, I think, when he had a very strong belief in himself and has a lot of wide, wide, wide array of interests outside of sports. So. Um, you know, we wanted to give him that platform to be able to let people know his story and just kind of the background off the court of who he is. It's grounded and humble. You know, he's a guy that understands how big of a deal this is, where he came from, and what he's made of himself. But like Jake said, he's not really concentrated on George Hill, the basketball player. He's concentrating more on George Hill, the person. And we've learned all kinds of different things about him. He rides horses. He goes fishing. You know, all kinds of things that you would never expect when you just look at a Pacers box score after a night. So it's, it's really been eye-opening just for us in, in knowing him and covering him for 10 years, hearing some of these details that I had no idea about. Come out, enjoy the fine dinner at the Winter Circle. You can have, even go over and have a cigar if you'd like, but if you don't want to, no problem. It's not smoking where we are in here, so it's not going to bother you. Come out and have fun. You can meet George, get an autograph, get an autographed basketball and jersey in the drawing, so we have a good time. He goes around, throws it up, throws it in, and the Pacers win the game. Some of the biggest and brightest musicians have taken the time to hang out with the staff here at Real Scene TV, from Kelly Pickler to Charlie Wilson and Mindless Behavior. Tonight in something never before seen on Real Scene TV, musician and writer Eric Dill, formerly the band Click Five, will grant viewers an intimate concert and answer questions right here in our studios in a special segment we call the 247 Music Lounge. That's right, guys. He's been traveling the country playing with and writing music for some of the country's top artists. Just recently, he's made his return back home to Indiana to focus on his very own solo career. Without further ado, here's Eric Dill. Be sticking with us throughout the night as our special in-studio guest. Mobile Network One presents the Comedy Corner. 
Even when you're doing good, my mom's still cursing. I like stupid rap. I like two chains. You killed it again. Don't he look like one of them starving Ethiopian kids that grew up? <laughs> my women do send y'all kids to bed. That is the threat. Good night, go to bed. I just got up. You still sleepy, lay your ass down. I can't keep sleeping. Take two of these, you sick. Man, I ain't even sick. <laughs> you take them, I'm sick. I told you, lay down. <laughs> you know it's not gonna be too long before people start making those bad decisions like naming their kids stuff that they saw on Twitter. You know what? Uh, let's name them hashtag. We'll call him pound sign. It'll be gangster. I like that. I got one friend, this dude don't never brush his teeth, but he always chew and try it. He blow a bubble food, be all in it. You had said during your skit something like, uh, this was a new joke. You, were, you need to practice it a little bit. Is that something you, act, you think you come up with jokes, you practice them through your different shows and, and, and retell and retell and with practice comes perfection? Yep, yep. Uh, by the crowd's reaction to what you're doing, that gives you the confidence and the motivation to keep on doing it, keep adding on to it and until it's until it's polished. I gave a dude three dollars. He act like those were the three dollars he needed to not be homeless no more. As soon as I handed him the money, he'd be like, you done put me back in the game. I'm right back where I need to be. <laughs> right back where I need to be. I seen him again and gave him another dollar. He gave me a nickname. He jumped up when he saw me he like, baby bird, appreciate that money you gave me earlier. Every time he see me now, he jump up, baby bird, baby bird. Let me get them $4 up out you. I try to make you feel obligated. One thing, he didn't even have no line. He would just looked at me and said, you know, I'm out here. Hey, man, what's wrong with you? He just sitting here like he on the field trip. He ain't laughed or nothing. He just sitting in there just in the middle of the hour with a big ass orange. You ain't the feds or nothing, are you? I don't trust that, man. There's 600 black people in here, they put one white dude right there. That means we don't have the full trust of the club. It's, it's just something about him I don't trust. You can impress them kind of girls easy. All you gotta do is take them somewhere that got a commercial like, baby, you wanna go to Applebee's? Hell yeah, I wanna eat good in the neighborhood. Let me give y'all some advice, man. I always like to try to say something positive on my show. When you have the flow, you should try to say something to inspire people. So, if you're the ugliest person in your neighborhood, move around. Somebody uglier than you, you just gotta find them. You told us some pretty revealing things about yourself. No, those things aren't revealing okay. about myself. Those are just situations that people find themselves in. When you live life, you find yourselves in situations like, how in the hell did I end up like this? So that's what I talk about. I talk about stuff that I know nobody else would necessarily want to go and say. So it's different. Look at all these famous people on the wall. They still, they was rich when they came to Mortis, but they, George Carlin, they all came in. So I'm, I'm cool, I'm coming. Anytime Mortis call me, whatever. Still a stand-up com comedian. That's where my heart is. So TV, everything, all that came from doing this. For more information on Straight Up Stupid Sundays, visit straightupstupid.com. You can catch the next Straight Up Stupid show at Morty's Comedy Club on April 7th. Coming up next on Real Scene TV, the sassy side of exercise and scenes from this year's Midwest Fashion Week. Plus, more with Eric Deal. Take what you feel like, take it. So you take it up. Equipments for RSTV provided in part by Roberts Everything Photo, Everything Imaging. Real Scene TV is brought to you in part by Elite Media, Surround Yourself. Clothing provided by Plato's Closet, Your Store, Your Style, Your Plato's Closets. Visit our two Central Indiana locations. Cadillac Ranch is Indy's premier all-American bar and grill. 
This casual, popular night spot offers the best in dining, comfort food, cocktails, and of course, the mechanical bowl. Someone will be at the controls and you will eventually get thrown off, so ladies, please dress appropriately when you decide to take this bowl riding challenge. There is so much to do at Cadillac Ranch. They have plenty of seating, including an outdoor patio, so it's perfect for parties. Gentlemen, nice to see ya. How you doing? Good, good, good. I got my El Sol de Tala gift card, so uh, Cerveza Rita's on me tonight. That's what I like to hear. It's gonna be a good night. Uh, raise your glasses, we'll drink to El Sol de Tala. Thank you. some drinks. Hey guys, I'm Amber here at Route 67. We have pool leagues on Monday nights, so we're going to start a beer pong tournament. We have dartboards also, live music every weekend, and on Tuesdays open mic night, we have amazing drink specials daily, and the food's amazing for bar food also. So anytime you want, come out here, visit us. There's me and about three, four other girls you'll see behind the bar, and hope to see you guys soon. The American fitness scene is ever evolving. We're constantly finding new and exciting ways to challenge ourselves. And tonight, Tanisha Johnson takes us inside a local fitness studio that's heels above the competition. Explain to us um, some of the fitness aspects of pole dancing. Well, pole dancing has a wide array of fitness aspects from the cardio aspect, um, weight training, core training, arm and leg training. So you get some of the toning, you get the cardio, you get the strength training, it's all simultaneous. Okay. What are some of the advantages of women coming to a pole dancing class as opposed to going to a gym? Um, it's all women, for one. Um, you get one-on-one. -on -one training, plus it's not the same old redundant treadmill. It builds self-confidence. It makes you a little more aware of um, body image mm -hmm. and um, gives you, like I said, more self-confidence. Um, plus it's dancing, it's fun, it's all women, so you kind of get a little bonding experience mm -hmm. together with them as well. How big of a difference do you see in women's confidence that start and have never done a class? Oh. As opposed to Endless. when they get like months in? We get so many women in here that don't get to really look at themselves and feel sexy or feel like a woman. We have some that are very shy and timid, and then by the end of a four or five week series, they are ready wow. to roll, so. And I know you have made a lot of husbands happy. Do you ever get them coming in here telling you thank you? We do, <laughs> we do. We get husbands that are saying, um, can we get a private lesson? Can we? Can you teach her some more here? I'll go ahead and pay her, for, pay her up for a month. And so they do. And if you wanted to just to give any advice to get the average woman here in this pink room, what would you say? I would say come here, become the sensual woman that you're designed to be, and this is where the confidence and this is where it all starts. Pole is my best friend, and you can be my best friend too. And Angela showed us those cute heels. Like, can you get everything in-house? In-house. You can order poles from us, you can order shorts from us, you can order shirts from us, shoes, et cetera, et cetera. We offer it all, pole grip, everything. How has it helped you? It helps me a lot. Um, helps with my confidence because I'm kind of quiet. Mm -hmm. um, I like to smile a lot, so more to get into it too much with my feminine side and my sexual side to be more of a woman to learn myself. Okay. Do you feel, do you see a huge change in yourself from the, from November till now? Absolutely. Um, I'm more at home with my body. I'm still working on my upper core. My legs are great. My stomach's getting a little bit fatter. I mean, not fatter, but a little bit skinnier. <laughs> and I lost weight as well. Just this alone, I've been able to lose like 27 pounds without wow. doing any other workout. So wow. it's definitely been a plus. Yeah, I can see the changes in myself. Um, even with my posture, you, once you learn some of the dance moves, you start to walk a little bit different. Okay. And inside of this room, you know, we're all having fun and everybody's like, oh yeah, I can do this and that. But when you walk outside of these doors, it's like a new you. Okay. And you, you take that sexiness with you and it's an inner thing and you just, you feel it. Speaking of fitness, join us for Keep the Beat, a Zumba charity event raising money for the Latino Health Coalition of Indiana.
Since its start in 2006, it has served as a global stepping stone for models and designers alike. We're taking you inside this spring's Midwest Fashion Week. What have you been most proud of? Designers coming from all over. I mean, we have designers from DC, we have designers from St. Louis, we have designers from uh, all those places that are actually participating, that are encouraging themselves, that are involving. And it's not just local. The thing is that's really happening, and it's really a un un unification front. The fact that those designers that are coming from elsewhere, they are really looking to infuse themselves into the Indianapolis market and also people that are outside of Indiana are looking forward to see what Indiana has to offer as far as not just in the designing but in every other aspect of the business as well. So basically you wanted to give people and local designers yeah. an opportunity to share fashion with the Definitely. Midwest. So that's what the Midwest Fashion Week is really all about. It's to create an opportunity for people that are here without going to New York City, don't have to go to London. Why don't you do it right here, right here at home and feel comfortable about it. Why do you think uh, Midwest Fashion Week is so important? Because it brings more exposure to those who enjoy fashion and who are talented in fashion in the Midwest. Until Midwest Fashion Week came to Indianapolis, um, there was really no, I, I felt like there was a culture gap that was missing. And now we have Midwest Fashion Week here and there's different venues with Midwest Fashion Week. It's brought together a lot of people to network and everything. And I think it's just brought a lot of culture to the city. So far from the shows you've seen, what's been the trends? I think most of the trends have been uh, lacy, real fruffy, I guess that would be the <laughs> word that's used, fruffy stuff for the women, and nice clean cut for the men. Well, that's a good note, everybody. Clean cut for the guys and lacy for the girls. Yeah, yeah. designers that you know haven't hit the big market yet and kind of see what they have to offer and I've been very impressed I was here last night too and it's kind of impressive to see what the Midwest can kind of bring to the fashion market I think it's a great opportunity from people from the Midwest to be exposed out into you know everybody's so focused on West Coast and East Coast I think it's really important that you know a lot of good stuff comes from here too this is my first time I've ever attended and so far I love it I've always been in retail and fashion and so I kind of wanted to check out the trends and what's new and happening and I've never been so I wanted to check it out. I think Fashion Week is so important because as the season and things are coming I think it's fabulous to showcase the different clientele, the different audience members, the fashion and the media, what's out, what's hot now, what you should wear, what should you go to the store and purchase and things like that. So I think that's why it's very important for Fashion Week so you can know the hottest trends out. My favorite part is also just giving back and giving other designers like myself a chance to show the emerging young designer the new edge and a new style. So that's my favorite part because it gave me an opportunity to show my craft and talent. And I just love the way that it's grown. Like the, the staging, the, it's, it's perfect now. I love the way it's grown. It brings the community together. It brings awareness to Indianapolis and lets people know that you don't have to go to New York to see good fashion. You can stay at home, come to the fashion shows here. It's awesome. It's so different. Every every designer has a different style, and I really enjoy that. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever been to Midwest Fashion Week, and it was very exhilarating. I am very proud to have been a part of it. It's a good thing in the Midwest to have the opportunity to showcase talent, be able to express what you think is in and things like that. Um, it gives you the opportunity to show the world that there's different trends to follow up other than what's on TV in the Hollywood world. Chatting with the lovely Benu, who's a big sponsor of Midwest Fashion Week. You saw the showcase tonight, what'd you think? I really liked all the designers, but then the one designer who's native to Indianapolis really liked the work. I believe that was Raymond Gray was native to Indianapolis. Yeah, great, great, so really outside the box. I thought Very really nice cool. Cut. Oh, I'm super excited to show my collection on Midwest Ramp after coming back from New York Fashion Week. It's a wonderful experience and a wonderful feeling. I'm so excited. Bernie created this ramp for uh, emerging designers. Uh, 
to give them a very good platform to come up, establish their brand and show their talent to people and it's very, very important for any talented person to come and show their collection over here. I mean, he really brings recognition to the place. He really uh, just, just makes um, a difference for all the local designers who really don't have an opportunity and uh, just puts them on the national stage. Well, there's so many new faces this year and it's wonderful that so many new people are getting involved and getting to meet those people and different designers from all over the country and it's fantastic. The Midwest needs more things like this. I think that we have tons of really talented artists and designers and they don't necessarily get the credit so having this here is a great way to showcase all their talents. It was amazing. I didn't know this was even happening. I didn't even know Indianapolis had a fashion scene and it's it was great fun. Everything was really really nice. It was a nice intimate environment and the girls did a great job. It's important to bring awareness to designers like myself from all different areas and to bring us all together. You, I made so many good connections here today. Absolutely. Thanks to Midwest Fashion Week. I know. Thanks Midwest Fashion Week. Coming up next a one-on-one -on -one with Eric Deal and a follow-up to a touching story that we brought you last time. Also, how you can win tickets to see Willie Nelson on April 6th at IU. Join Skybar and Skybar Live every Saturday night for Blend. DJ Matt Allen and special guests blend your favorite top 40, hip-hop, rock, and house music. Karaoke Tuesday is right around the corner at Taps and Dolls. Show off your singing skills while enjoying these drinks. Experience a night like nothing you've seen before. Keep the beat. Featuring a live DJ, live salsa performances, and Zumba from some of the city's top instructors. Keep the beat. Saturday, May 18 at Cesar's Group's Fitness Studio. Tickets are $10. My name is Bruce Pullman and my father started Roberts in 1957 on one premise. Offer the best service and the best products at the best prices. Roberts continues its tradition of offering great Nikon cameras at affordable prices. Stop in to see the new Nikon D600, Nikon's lowest price full frame camera, or the all new Nikon S800C. Send pictures wirelessly with Android capabilities and the Nikon J1 mirrorless camera. Depend on Roberts for the best names in camera like Nikon. Stop by and see us downtown and in Carmel this holiday season. Got a small business that needs marketing help? Contact Mobile Network One. With over 20 years of experience, they can help you get your business on track. Services are not limited, but include event management and street teams. To meet with a Mobile Network One team member, contact Isaac Daniels. Tax and Dolls is the tavern with a twist, located in the heart of downtown Indianapolis. The dolls can serve you one of over 50 beers they have on tap, and the kitchen is open late to satisfy your hunger needs. Gather your friends and play a round of pool seven nights a week or dance the night away with some of Indy's best DJs on Friday and Saturday nights. Taps and Dolls is located on South Meridian Street, across from Blue, and right above Six. 247 Sky Bar. The class and sophistication of the yesterday meet the chic modern style of today's nightlife. Take a step back in time and up to the next level, 247 Sky Bar. Featuring nostalgic decor, ample seating, laid back music, and the classiest drinks in downtown Indianapolis. 247 Sky Bar is located at 247 South Meridian, within walking distance of all major downtown attractions and hotels. And now, introducing 247 Sky Bar Live, located next door to 247 Sky Bar. Take your concert experience to new heights at our ideally located venue in downtown Indianapolis. Check out the concert series by visiting us on Facebook. At 247 Sky Bar Live, the sky's the limit. We've got a pair of Willie Nelson tickets to give away. But you need to answer this trivia question and go to our Facebook friend page. And we're going to pick a random winner from all the entries. The question is, what famous Patsy Cline song did Willie Nelson compose? He's been with us throughout the night. We're headed back to Danielle and the 247 Music Lounge. You were telling me about how you went to Purdue. You play covers and everything. Yeah. And then you made the big trek out to L.A. Yeah. So what was that like? Well, to be honest, my situation was, was uh, I, I got fast-tracked, okay? Um, in the world of entertainment, you can kind of get a fire lit under your project. And if you have the right people behind it and the right media outlets and they put enough money behind you and you get the right this and that and somewhere to the zeitgeist, you can fire off and all of a sudden people know who you are. And that's what the Click 5 experienced. We got fast-tracked in that, um, well, we were legitimate in that we had, we had something to offer, okay? So when you have something to offer, the industry wants to see what's up. So we played around. We did a bunch of, uh, we got in front of, you know, little rooms in front of 
you know, the, the head of Warner Music Group and all, universe, all these people that like, you'll never meet, but, but they're the people that say okay to every movie and every TV show you'll ever see. And ultimately it came down that, that people wanted to sign the act, the Click Five, you know? And uh, so we signed to Lava Records uh, through Jason Flom. But for me, as an artist, wanting to share my own stuff, it's such a nice segue into saying, do you know this, that, and the other? Well, maybe you should check out this music that I wrote, you know, this record that I have, and I'm living in Indianapolis and I'm playing shows and all that thing. So it's, um, it, it's, it's sort of this incredible opportunity that I have to reapproach my music career and decide what I want to do with it. And what I want to do with it is I want to always make music and I always want to put out records and I always want to share with So who inspires you most? I like everything from Savage Garden to uh, Nine Inch Nails, you know, and it couldn't be more different in some ways. Yet to me, they're similar in ways. And maybe Trent Reznor, he would, he would agree with me, he's smart enough to agree. <laughs> but it's all music and it's, 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 it's sort of a pop music and in that I mean that it's music that is a certain, has a certain uh, sort of appeal to it that We've heard enough, we like enough, and we tweak it, we play with it, and, uh, and it's the sort of kind of music that people can, can pick up and hum along to, you know. But as far as me, I like to write the songs and I like to create a feeling for them, you know, stories and feelings. It's like you go to a movie and you, you leave with a feeling. Like I want every song that I have to leave somebody with some sort of imagery and feeling they can get in touch with anytime. So let's talk about your new record. You're yeah. telling me about how this is art, this is your heart and soul. Absolutely. your music and you seem to really be in a good place right now so kind of tell me a little bit about what was going into making this record um this record was kind of like a long time coming in that it was my first record you know my first solo record so i could have really put in any song that i ever made you know which is kind of a daunting task i have hundreds of songs but i picked out like i talked about before there was a lot of like romance and angsty sort of stuff that i had in my mind because uh, like I said, like interpersonal relationships, you learn so much about yourself and people in general. So I have these ballad type of songs that I have quite a few on the record that I really like. And, um, I put them out there. And then what I did was I took the other songs and I wanted to get, I wanted to touch on other things. Well, our fans are huge music lovers, so where can they pick up a copy, download on iTunes? For sure. Uh, the digital distribution is obviously very big these days, so you can go to iTunes, Amazon. CD Baby. Um, I actually went to a couple of local places, Indie CD and Vinyl, Vibes, and Luna Music, and I gave them some of my CDs on consignment so you can pick up physical copies there if you'd like that. You have quite a big following on social media, Facebook and Twitter getting a lot of love, so you can follow them there. Special thanks to our first ever 247 Music Lounge guest, Eric Dill. If you're a musician and you're interested in playing at the Music Lounge, just email us at rstv at realscenetv.com. Last time, we told you about eight-year-old Riley patient Braden Thomasitis and Nathan's Playroom. Well, thanks to your generosity, we raised $300 and got 154 beach balls to give to Nathan's Playroom, his non-for-profit organization. We gave them those gifts last week, and as we wrap up the show, we're going to show you some images from that amazing surprise. Good night. Real Scene TV is brought to you by Top Shelf Productions.